So hi everyone, this is Richard from Data Robot Product Marketing. Today's demo scenario will be a use case to predict property values. This could be applicable for anyone in the real estate space, but we can easily apply the same concepts to evaluations for insurance policies, loans, or risk assessment use cases. By the time I'm done, I want you to take away five things about Data Robot. One, we have an end-to-end -end platform from data to value. Two, our AI is explainable and trusted. Three, we perform continuous learning all the time so we can easily account for changing conditions. Four, we can use diverse data formats in a single model. And five, we'll work in a great UI designed for many different personas that are involved in the data science lifecycle. So let's get into it. So here's the familiar data robot home screen. I'm gonna start by looking in AI catalog for a data set. I can see 85 data sets in total. I'm gonna to search for the house listings data set. Here it is. The data set contains almost 6,000 property listings with 32 features of various types. Let's take a closer look at some sample data. So each row is a property listing with features such as year built, zip code, lat long, and a feature that describes the shape of the zip code as a polygon. We also have the listing price, which will be our target, the number of beds and bathrooms, and so on. For each listing, we also have several image features that show the exterior of the property and various rooms inside. We also have freeform text features, such as the description of the property. This is what we call a multimodal data set, and DataRobot can make predictions using all of this diverse content in the same model. But before we build models, we'll take a quick look at how we prepared the data. This is DataRobot Paxata. It makes data prep really fast and easy to do. If I pull up my house listings, I can see the same data set we were looking at in the catalog. This is what I use to prepare it. If I click start here, I can see what the data looked like in its original state, mainly just numeric and categorical features. And if I click here, I can replay all the steps I went through to get the data ready. I performed a bunch of lookups to get my images joined on, filtered out some bad rows, and finally joined in the zip code geometry data so we can do some geospatial analysis. This sources column is nice as it shows me where all the joins were successful for each row and where they were not. So let's publish this data set to AI Catalog. That was easy, not a line of code in sight. Okay, we're back in Catalog looking at our prepared data set. Let's create a new project from it so we can build some models. Data Robot is now reading in the data set and doing some initial exploratory data analysis so we get a deeper understanding of the data set prior to model training. If we scroll down the page, we see some summary statistics about the features. This includes the number of unique and missing values, as well as means and medians. First, we need to choose a target to predict. We are going to pick listing price. Now I see a nice distribution of my target variable. And note that DataRobot has automatically detected that this is a regression problem and has recommended gamma deviance as the most appropriate optimization metric. It has also detected the geospatial features in the dataset. I'm going to hit the start button now. If you look to the right, you can see what DataRobot is doing. It's creating the cross-validation and holdout partitions, as well as characterizing the target variable. It's also going to carry out some more in-depth EDA to look for target leakage. This occurs when information from the future leaks into the training dataset and makes your model look too good to be true. DataRobot automatically searches for and flags this. Once this is complete, DataRobot is going to start building predictive models. I'll increase my workers count to 10, so it builds 10 models in parallel. DataRobot is now accessing its large repository of open source and proprietary packages and is going to try out various modeling techniques for me. The models that do best will survive the first round and be fed more data. The models that do well from that group will get fed even more data and so on. Ultimately, only the best algorithms to solve my specific problem will survive. Let's not wait though. Let's flash forward and explore the results. One of the ways DataRobot inspires trust is through a data quality assessment. 
Here we can see outliers and missing images have been detected, otherwise the data looks good. These warning signs show us where the data issues lie. If we open up our square foot feature, we can see a chart and a box plot that show us the distribution. If we click Show Outliers, we can see the actual outlying observations that DataRobot detected. We can also look at the distribution over space using our location features. This heat map shows us clearly where the properties with the highest and lowest square footage are located. Here we can see that DataRobot has automatically derived some new spatial features from our zip code geometry, such as centroid, minimum bounding rectangle area, and so on. A quick glance at the high school feature shows us clearly where the folk with the most expensive houses send their kids to school. And this word cloud summarizes the key terms extracted from our freeform text features and show how they relate to the target. We can also inspect our image features. Here we can see different kitchens organized by price range. We can click into our lower end kitchens and look at some of the examples. We can also compare these to kitchens in our medium to higher end price ranges. Let's take a look at the model leaderboard now. DataRobot built 34 in total, and the winner is this light gradient boosted tree regressor with early stopping. If we open the model, we can see its blueprint. It shows all the pre-processing steps involved to get the data ready for this model, and this is a really complex one. It did some natural language processing on the text features, built a spatial neighborhood featureizer for the geospatial data, performed ordinal encoding on the categorical variables, and leveraged a pre-trained squeeze net featureizer on the image features. If you want more information, all you have to do is click on the box and follow the link to the documentation. Here you'll find a description of what DataRobot did within this modeling step, as well as the parameters that were adjusted. Since this model relies heavily on deep learning, right here you can visualize the neural network itself. There are no black boxes in DataRobot. I can look at any of the levels or layers in this network. The Data Quality Handling Report shows us exactly how all the features we saw earlier that were flagged as having quality issues were handled in this model. For example, for all of our missing values, we can see exactly what values were imputed. Now let's say you decide you want to move forward with this model. The next step is to evaluate the fit. The Evaluation tab gives us some tools. The Lift Chart shows us the fit of the model across the prediction distribution. If you click on residuals, this will take you to a plot that allows you to look at the actual and predicted residual values. And the accuracy over space map helps us understand the residuals in terms of the zip code geometries we saw earlier. At a glance, it's pretty easy to see where we are over and under predicting based on location. Once you've evaluated the fit of your model, the next step is to understand how the features are impacting predictions. Feature Impact shows us exactly which features are important to this model. We see zip code geometry as the most important feature, followed by square foot and acres. Bathrooms is flagged as redundant in this model. The exterior image is next, followed by text features such as amenities and description. The kitchen image feature is after that. This chart clearly shows us how all of these diverse feature types combine to predict property price. We'll explore image embeddings next. Here we are looking at the kitchen images. DataRobot performs unsupervised learning to cluster these images so we can see unexpected patterns. For example, DataRobot sees clear differentiation in the images of modern kitchens as opposed to the more traditional kitchens with wooden cabinets. 
Image activation maps show us exactly where the network looked for each and every prediction it made. This gives us confidence that the model is looking at the right parts of the images when making predictions. You can click Show Color Overlay to see the activated areas more clearly. And finally, Prediction Explanations shows us the local impact of features on our target. Here we find a row-by-row -row explanation of why a prediction was made the way it was. It's a sample here, but you can get these for every row in your dataset. You can see in red three listings that have a very high price prediction. This is because the properties that have high square footage, sit on lots of acres of land, are in specific zip codes, and for this prediction, the model thought the exterior image was important. As was this extremely high-end kitchen for this prediction. At the other end of the spectrum, DataRobot wasn't impressed at all with this bathroom, which is part of the reason it predicted such a low listing price. These explanations are especially useful if you are trying to justify the predictions to a non-data scientist. As this model looks really good, at this point I might want to go ahead and deploy it. One of the most popular ways DataRobot lets you deploy a model is to an endpoint with an API that can serve up predictions in real time. I could do this here, but for this model, I'm going to add it to the model registry. This creates a model package so it can be deployed later on. We'll come back for this model very soon. If I click Deployments, I see DataRobot's MLOps dashboard. I have 17 active deployments that I'm monitoring right now. I see a summary of all the predictions as well as service health, data drift, and accuracy summaries. If I switch to the governance view, I can see the importance of the models, whether they were built by DataRobot or externally, and whether or not humility rules are turned on, as they are for this deployment. Clicking into the housing price predictor deployment, which has been serving predictions for a few days now, I see an overview screen. It gives me a top-line view of the deployment status, as well as showing me governance information, like who and when the deployment was created and who was involved in the review and approval workflow. Clicking on Service Health, I get a more detailed view of typical service metrics for my deployment, such as the total requests and data error rates, in addition to capturing this data in real time, I can also view any period in history to see trends. Clicking on the Accuracy tab allows me to view all of the model accuracy metrics in real time and historically. I can also look at predicted versus actual values over time. It looks like my model in general is pretty good. However, maybe I am under predicting a little too much. I can address this by switching my current model with a more accurate one. We'll look at this later. Let's look at data drift now. Here I can see my features in terms of drift versus importance. We're in good shape. Our important features are stable. However, the elementary school might be drifting. If we click it, we can see the values on the right. Looks like a new school has opened and our model doesn't know how to handle it yet. Looking below, I also note that we are starting to see prediction anomalies, so maybe I want to address this issue now before accuracy starts to become a problem. Another way to monitor model accuracy in production is via humility rules. These can be configured to trigger when DataRobot is uncertain of any prediction it makes. This enables us to react in real time. Here we see a rule to override the prediction to a preferred value whenever the square foot feature value is out of normal bounds. The Summary tab shows me all the times this rule has been triggered. That way I can see how often this is occurring and take corrective action. Prediction warnings are also enabled for this deployment. This simply triggers a warning whenever the predicted property price is outside normal bounds. Of course, I don't have to live inside my MLOps dashboards. Here I can configure notifications to arrive in email or Slack. Challenger models are additional models that we can test alongside the current production model or champion. Here I have two Challenger models configured. Below I can compare how these models perform over time on the same prediction data as our production model. 
Here I'm comparing my max accuracy model with my champion. I can look at any accuracy metric. It looks like this challenger is actually slightly more accurate than the current champion. Let's add another challenger into the mix. Data Robot lets you have up to three. We will pick the model we trained and exported to the registry earlier. Perhaps this will show even more accuracy. For clarity, I will call this one my AI experience model. All I need to do now is click Update Challenger Predictions, and Data Robot will replay historical prediction data against this new challenger so I can compare. Alternatively, I could switch out my current champion with my max accuracy model right now. If I want to do this, I will need to send it through the tightly governed approval workflow that we saw earlier. Let's end the demo by clicking on Use Cases. This feature tracks the value of your AI initiatives. I can filter by stage to see just the use cases in ideation. And switching to in production shows me all the use cases with deployed models. At the bottom, I can see a residential property pricing use case. It looks like this use case has the potential to make us almost half a million dollars a year, of which we have already realized about 100K. If I click value, I can see the realized value versus the number of predictions over time. And below, I see its relative priority and can input my known business metrics to calculate the value I will receive. Here, you can organize all your data robot assets like datasets, models, and deployments around the use case. And you can also comment and collaborate with others right here in the application. So that's all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed the demo. We showed you how the Data Robot Enterprise AI platform makes it easy to go all the way from raw data to ROI. Thanks for watching.